Welcome to another Monday morning art talk. I just came back from doing about five different workshops in England and Ireland and I'm a little bit jet lagged but no excuses here. I'm going to give you guys the energy that um, this deserves, that uh, all these deserve, just giving any sort of insight that I can and maybe start your week off in the right direction. Um, so what I wanted to, st the topic that I wanted to talk about today was uh, based on what I just experienced um, that you guys are aware of is what it takes to think about putting together a Kickstarter campaign. Now, before you shut off and say, this doesn't interest me, I have no desire to do a Kickstarter campaign. Well, I felt the same way. I had no desire to do a Kickstarter campaign. It's one of these things that I always tell people is, forget about your future because we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. Set goals for yourself, but I had no idea that someday in the future I was going to do a Kickstarter campaign because in my mind, I was just um, kept putting it off, putting it off and just, oh, that's way too much work. I don't want to do that and realize that you can't do that. That's not OK to do. And we go through this all the time that the amount of work we perceive for something to be on a project that we want to do in the back of our head, that could be publishing our own book, that could be starting our own animation company, that could be starting our own business, that could be putting together a portfolio, whatever it is, the amount of work that we have in our mind of what it's going to be just turns us off. We decide that it's so much easier sometimes not to do it because... I have no headache. I don't have to uh, worry about it anymore. There's there's nothing uh, to even think about. And I don't have to worry about if I'm going to succeed at it. I don't have to worry about if I'm going to fail at it because I'm not going to do it. So no sweat off my back. But with the Kickstarter campaign um, and what this is about, maybe giving you guys some insets, uh, insight. So maybe some of you guys are thinking about putting one together right now. Maybe some of you guys are thinking about doing one in the next two, three years. And I would say, you know what, what do you have to lose? The only thing you have to lose is the regret of not doing it. The only thing that comes of it, if it's not successful, is your project doesn't get funded and it's not successful. And so, hey, at least you tried and maybe you're going to start to acquire funds on your own and make it happen anyway. So then you can start setting up at conventions and selling your own book. It's just a great way to... Um, just to bring in almost just pre-orders, right? Because that's what this is, is bringing, bringing in revenue to make it possible for you just to pull the trigger and go. For many books that I've done in my past, it was all self-funded with a risk. Then that risk is, the risk is greater because you don't know if people are going to buy it. You don't know if people are going to pre-order it. You don't know if you're going to sell it and you decide, I'm going to do this, I'm going to take money out of my own account that I've saved, and I'm going to make this happen, and cross your fingers. And that's what I've always done in the far past, and this time I thought, you know, because of Kickstarter has become such a huge platform, and there's that capability of just trying to, in a sense, you're getting investors. That's what Kickstarter is. You're basically, instead of going on Shark Tank, if many of you are familiar with that, and going on there and trying, or that English show, the dragon one, uh, what are they called, something. Um, you go in there and you're asking people, I have an idea. And if you like my idea and you want to support my idea, well, with investment from you, I can now get this made and get the funding. And that's what we're doing here with Kickstarter. We're simply trying to raise money, raise awareness, um, even more so, which is a great platform too, is letting people know that, hey, this is coming out. And it gives a platform for people to share your idea with what's going on, all right? So with that little bit said, let's just get into just a little bit more about what I discovered through Kickstarter. So my hope is that maybe I can give you insight into things just to think about or be aware of or and share with you all my research because I can tell you I did hours upon hours upon hours of research before I even did this uh, campaign. And I would advise you to do the same thing. And I'm not talking about just listening to the fact what I'm telling you right now and let it be, that's just good enough. He told me what I need to know, I'm gonna do it now. Research this yourself. Look at articles that have been written because this is vital. And this is just like character designing. You have to research whatever you're gonna be designing anyway. Everything you do in life, you should research. You wanna buy a new car? 
you wanna make sure that you're researching the best prices, the best deals and everything. You're buying a house, you're gonna research. Getting an apartment, you research. Everything in life you do requires preemptive research in order to fully comprehend what it is you're even getting into. So that way you're prepared because that's what it comes down to is the preparation. The preparation is going to make um, this experience just a lot easier and a lot less stressful. So always remember that just whatever you want to do, be prepared. Boy Scout motto, be prepared. And that's what it comes down to. Now, I will do want to share with you just something very interesting, but this is my own personal thing. I believe in setting goals and having an idea. So on the day that I launched my Kickstarter, I didn't know how far it was going to go. I didn't know. I, I believed that it was going to do well. I just didn't know how well, but I did. And I want to share with you this. I had this on my drawing board from the day that I wrote. And my goal was this, and it was dated on the uh, September 15th. My Kickstarter goal was I wanted in my mind to get over a hundred thousand dollars. That's what I wanted. And it happened. And I thank you guys. First, this is a great place just to say thank you for all of you that supported this and made this a reality and gave me the opportunity just to um, order the books that I'm going to need to order and, and make this happen. And it was a fun experience at the end of the day. And I'm so grateful to you for my, my supporters for, for making this uh, possible. So once again, thank you. You can still go to the Kickstarter and check it out. And if you missed the specials and the rewards, you can go to um, the pre-order page and you can still order it. You won't get the books as early as the Kickstarter backers um, or some of those rewards, but you'll still be able to uh, get the book um, around January, February, all right? Um, so let's get into just some of the things that I um, my I learned. Uh, one of the things that I, I learned is comes down first and foremost is the passion behind your Kickstarter project. You have to truly, I, I, I think in order to raise, make a good Kickstarter project, you have to just be enthusiastic about it. You have to be passionate about it. It can't just be this just random little idea that, hey, I'm just going to do this because I'm, I want to make money at it. I don't think you get into Kickstarter to make money at it. I think you get, get into Kickstarter because you want to truly, truly, and honestly provide a service and provide something of value to your friends and your fans because these are the people that are going to be passing on this Kickstarter. These are the people who are even making this a reality. It's not you as an individual making a reality. The only aspect you have in this is the creation. You are the creator. You have the idea. You're enthusiastic and you think, you know, this would be a great time to get whatever it is you're trying to invent, whatever you're trying to publish, whatever you're trying to do that you believe so much in trying to put it out there but the rest is up to the people and the fan base that you've built and not only the fan base that you've built but do they believe in it and there's going to be just a percentage don't think just because you have a hundred thousand followers or fifty thousand followers or ten thousand followers or five thousand followers that all of them are going to support your kickstarter they won't they usually say it comes down to about really just 1%, up to 5% maybe of those people are going to follow through and and give the, the support that you're looking for. So just keep that in mind. So don't think because your audience is large or wherever you are in your audience that everyone's going to do it. They won't, okay? So that's just one thing um, that you want to keep in mind. Number two, I shouldn't even say number two, number three, I'm going to lose track. So just follow, follow any, any rationalization that I have. Um, keep your rewards, I think, simple when you're setting up your reward system. Don't get them too complex in the written description. Don't get too wordy. You want to make sure that you're keeping it nice and simple and the words and you kind of just have that that basic statement. So make sure that you have that basic statement. Keep them simple. 
Um, you could have rewards anywhere from five rewards up to 10 rewards, up to 12 rewards. I wouldn't start getting into 15, 16, 20 rewards. It starts to get just a little bit daunting and overwhelming for people to look at. Okay, so that's with the rewards. And I'll just, maybe I'll just continue with the rewards factor here. Um, as you're doing the rewards, make sure that you absolutely are keeping in mind um, uh, just price points. So you want to just start sort of small and work your way up. They say typically, and I found it to be true, the $50, around $50 is really an average reward that most people are going to back. Some people are going to go to 100 some people 200 But if you have a nice reward that would be anywhere from, I'd say, $30 to $55, I think that's a good ballpark range to have within your reward system. Another thing is you have to, if you're sending out a product, and this this is something that I learned on this, was the shipping. You have to make sure you get your shipping rates charged and covered through this. Do not um, forget or, or put aside what you're going to have to cover for the shipping. So here's the misconception too. People look at the rewards and go, oh my God, he's raised over 100,000, he's raised 200,000, you've raised whatever you may be. Within that money, the, cal the kickstart is calculating in the shipping that you've charged too. So it's not all the money you're making. That's just not all individual. That includes your shipping costs too. So keep that in mind. And your shipping is vital. I have heard more stories, more horror stories of, of kickstarters going horribly wrong. Even though they appear to have raised enough money, they just didn't because they did not cover their shipping costs. So make sure that you are covering your shipping costs. And unfortunately, international friends, you can't, it's, it's just unfortunate, but shipping is expensive internationally. There's nothing we can do about it. We have to charge for that. And also don't take him, just don't say shipping costs. You want to make sure that you're getting some bubble wrap to protect the boxes. You're making sure that you're ordering just the packaging. So that includes the shipping costs. Shipping costs also inc include maybe you need to pay for a label service. Um, and that's something that I have to do. I have to pay. I have over 1,700 books that were ordered uh, through this campaign. So I need to, I found, again, doing research, I found a printer that's going to be able to print out those shipping label costs because could you imagine the cost of the ink and all the paper you have to get to make those labels? That's part of your expenses too. You have to consider your expenses. That is the cost of business is expenses. So don't put that and neglect that aside. So now I'm paying on top of uh, the shipping costs for this service to make the printing labels for me. And on top of that, I'm going to be hiring. I need to hire some people. I'm not going to expect them to do it for free. Hey, you want to come over and help me pack books and I'll give you some pizza? Maybe some people will do that, but I figure hey, it'll be a nice thing if I could pay these people too. So I'm going to be paying some um, um, artists and even uh, um, I'm going to be paying a, uh, a male uh, person from the post office. I'm going to be paying them because they're familiar with the shipping and have them help me with the shipping too and the packaging, okay? So there's a lot of things involved in a lot of time. So make sure that you think about that, what your shipping is going to be um, and that should cover all your shipping costs, all right? So that sort of like covers the rewards, the things that I went through, the things that I experienced, the shipping, again, um, it's just the way it is, all right? The next thing that I just want to cover is a goal. I think setting a realistic goal. Set a realistic goal. Really do your research and know how much you're going to need. Don't just assume, hey, I'm going to just charge this much just because I see many Kickstarter uh, goals. They get a little up there. They're starting 20, 30,000 goal. I can start to get a little steep now. Maybe that's what it's going to cost to get all your goal uh, made. So just just maybe that's what it is and that's what you have to do. But I, I think kind of be a, be a realistic or to the best as you can. Just really think about that. And, and then you got to start thinking about if you want to do the rewards and everything else, the, um, not the rewards, the, um, the incentives, the, the stretch goals. So, you know, you're thinking about that. But for me, I, I set my, I found out what my goal was, what I need to make the minimum. And I set that and I felt it was a reasonable goal. It was set at 10,500. 
good and I felt that that's doable. I almost get a little scared when I look at people's goals and they say it's $60,000. I go, whoa, damn, man, dang, that's going to be good luck, you know, and people make it. They do it all the time, but just something to consider, especially your first time out. If you don't have a large fan base, if you don't have that, don't go crazy and setting those crazy uh, goals that are way too much or way too high, more than you even need. But again, I, I don't feel Kickstarter is a money making business. It's not for you to say, oh, I'm going to make some money. Yeah, who? I'm gonna, people are going to be giving me fun. It's not about that. It's about you're trying to kickstart a project. You're trying to make something a reality from nothing happen. And this again is that passion project that you're doing it because you're hoping to raise that money just to make this a reality. And through this, again, you're going to build your fan base and you build this awareness. And this is why. Um, I think it's really great to do. It's a great way to expose the idea that you have a product coming out to a lot of people that aren't even familiar with you. So I ended up, and you can track, once you set your Kickstarter, you can see where all the people, where they ordered from, where they came from, they how many people ordered from Facebook, how many people ordered from outside of Facebook, how many people uh, were people that were just outside that you they didn't even know you, they just found you on Facebook, on, on Kickstarter. So that's fascinating to see how many people and books I sold from people that didn't even know who I was. So don't let Kickstarter, don't let the idea of doing Kickstarter just be based on the fact that you don't have enough fans, okay, that's helpful, but keep in mind, if you have a great project, if you have a great concept, you're going to reach people who have no idea who you are, like what happens to me at conventions. When I set up at conventions and I'm selling my prints there, I love it when a lot of people, I can honestly say that over 50% of the people that buy from me at conventions don't even know who I am. And let that be a lesson to you that you don't have to have all the credits and be established and all this to make something a reality. As long as you have that that faith and that discipline and that willingness to pursue your, your gift, your passion, what it is you want to do, you'll reach people if people find your work interesting. If they like what they do and they find value in that and go, God, I love this. This is so awesome. I want to give that as a gift to someone. I want to do this. That's what it all comes down to. Again, so don't get in your head that you're not famous enough, that you're not well-known enough. That's a bunch of hogwash, all right? I wasn't any famous or anything. No one knows who I was or did anything before any of the shows uh, that I started. Um, I just got out there and did it. And in a sense, you can say I kind of built my audience and I made myself um, known through just exposure of myself and putting myself out there. And that became an awareness and has led to everything that's happened in my life. I wasn't born with talent. I wasn't, I'm no genius. I'm no better character designer than many other character designers out there. It's just, again, that belief in yourself and wanting to take the risks and make things happen and do it. Um, so back to the Kickstarter. Uh, so that's what I would say in, in regard to our goals. Um, the next thing that um, was very helpful for me, another reason why I was skeptical at first about doing a Kickstarter, because all I ever saw people doing were stretch goals. And stretch goals started to make me panic. They started to make me go, my God, look what these people are doing, just trying to get up to that next level. They're giving themselves not only so much work, but extra expense. And now you're adding even more expense to what you have to do. Is this the right approach? Is that what you should be doing? And I researched it again. And through my research, I found that most people advise not to do stretch goals. And that was because what it ends up doing is a lot of the times it, it puts even more expense into your, your projects. Okay. So that's something where people say, I'm going to provide this yet. They haven't even researched it to make sure it's even possible or that they're even going to get that on time. Another thing that happens is that people... Um, they're just trying to, um, again, you are trying to get to that next, you know, that next level and it's great, but yeah, just why people were saying it was just mainly the expense and mainly just because of the time of delivery. So it, it held up all of a sudden their book was ready, but now they told you that you were going to get, I don't know, uh, an iPhone case or something or a jacket or something with it. And now you got to get that and maybe that's not being delivered on time. So then it kept pushing things further and further back from the delivery date of what it was people even wanted in the first place. 
People want what it is you have to offer and that's why they're supporting you. And that's the first thing you just got to remember. And that was something that a fellow cartoonist told me. I said, I would always ask people, again, always be inquisitive. Be inquisitive in your life and that'll get you further in what it is that you want to do. Okay, so this is very important. So one of those things was I would, I asked, so what things have you learned? I talked to different people, Kickstarter, what did you learn? And I got this great advice and I learned so much from this. And one of those things was, um, I wish, the, the artist says, I wish I would have believed more in my product that I put out there instead of basing it all on the stretch goals because he outdid himself and out exhausted himself and out stretched himself on the stretch goals where um, it didn't, it sort of backfired. And that was a huge lesson to me. It's just absolutely believe in your product that you're putting out there because that's what everyone's going for. People aren't coming to your Kickstarter. People are coming to your Kickstarter to get an exclusive. You know, that's a, hey man, I'm going to get this book before other people get the book. Hey, I'm going to sign it, but it's going to be signed, but it's not going to be signed, you know, just when ordered through these other mediums. Hey, you're going to do a special sketch in a special tier, you know, some nice rewards for mine. You get these extra pages or things that you're not going to get normally in any other way. And that was incentive enough. So to me, what I just went through with this was proof in the pudding that you don't have to, I didn't do stretch goals, as you guys know, I, I didn't. I, I gave you updates, I believed in giving you updates and I'll continue to give you updates and that's the most important thing because what people are looking for is just love, that people want love, they just kinda wanna know that they're getting insight into the process, a little extra, so I threw in some extra videos, I threw in a little extra thing that you can print that just tells you my five main disciplines, um, so little things like that and I thought, you know, that's, that's nice, you know, to give. I wanted to give something, but I realized I'm not going to do the stretch goal thing. I can't, I don't want to, again, it's add this extra expense. And even though you think, yeah, but you're making so much money, you're not making so much money from the Kickstarter in that because what you're doing, you're paying for the books that you got to keep buying, right? You got every time someone backs you, that's another book that you're responsible for paying for. It's not free. It's not free money that comes out of there. So that's something very important just to consider um, that you don't, do you have to have a successful Kickstarter campaign with a stretch goal? No. Um, and that's where I did it. And there was a point where Oh, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And I pulled myself back and said, no, I'm going to go with my commitment just because more than anything, I believe it or not, I wanted to share this. I wanted to share my experience with you and say that you can do a Kickstarter without setting stretch goals and knowing that that's truly not what people are hunting for. Do they want the extra buttons and the pins and the bumper stickers and all this? Well, it'd be fun, but do they really want it? No, they believe in your product what it is that you're doing, and that's why they're going for that. And so that's the very important thing to remember just about the Kickstarter um, with the stretch goals. Um, what else? So now I'm in the shipping phase. Um, uh, now i got to start thinking about that. So this is something I haven't experienced yet, but I do know that what happens is with Kickstarter, people want to know, hey, I never put in my shipping address and all this. So at the end of any Kickstarter campaign, you're given these surveys where I'm supposed to send out a survey to everyone on the different tiers. And you can only do it once. Kickstarter only lets you do it once. So you want to make sure that you have all your questions asked. If you need their emails, if you need their address, if you need whatever information, you make sure you're sending that out uh, to them. So I haven't, I'm about to start that phase where I'm going to now get everyone's address and email from you so that I can send you your book and the extra seven pages uh, when that comes. So now this is going to be a whole new experience. It's going to be almost a full-time job. I have over 1,700 books that I need to sign, okay, and package and ship. So there's going to be a lot of work involved um, on top of just still you know, the book's done. It's just now collaborating, putting it all together, making it nice and pretty and, and organizing it. So it's not like I'm having to start from scratch. Um, so that's something to think of. So that's another thing that I would advise you to do when you do a Kickstarter, make sure your project's done. 
make sure you're ready to roll because if you're not, you are going to cause a lot of stress on yourself because what you get 30 days to do it. And once you do it, if your project isn't going and you're just getting it started, not only are you going to keep waiting for your back, your backers are going to keep waiting, keep waiting, keep waiting, and you got to keep pushing it. You may not see the book for another year or something like that. I, I would say take that stress of yourself. Don't rush the kickstart. It's just use your patience. And that's the most important lesson to have more than anything is to have patience. Use your patience on these projects and anything in life you're going to do. Don't rush it. Make sure you're putting out the best quality, the best thing that you can do. Um, and I think that's a very important thing. All right. Um, what else have I experienced on this? Um, just, you know, comments, writing back, making sure you're writing back. Everyone that sends a comment with a question, you uh, make sure you respond back to them. I think that's very important. And I've done that. Um, I've been writing all my comments back. What else has been going on with my Kickstarter? Um, I think that's about it. I think I've kind of covered it all in, in the grounds, you know, the basis. If you guys have any specific question that I didn't cover, again, I feel like I've said a lot, but there may be things that I haven't said. If you have any questions about it, I can may maybe mention it in my next art talk. So be sure to write it in the comments. Okay, I just had a uh, brain fart of an idea of other things that I didn't mention. So this is just a, a wee little insert into this. In regards to your video, um, when you do your video, just keep in mind, um, really keep it anywhere from, I didn't do this and this is what I learned, anywhere from about maybe a minute 30 up to about three minutes long. The attention span is low. I, my video went over five minutes um, and it was long. But I, I just had, I didn't know. That's one of the things I didn't know. And I just had so much to say and, and I was trying to fit it all in there. But just keep that in mind. Keep the video short. And another thing also with the videos, and this is very interesting, keep in mind only about 20% of the people will watch the videos even all the way through. Um, so it's a very small amount and a lot of people, believe it or not, won't even watch the video. As crazy as that sounds, they just want to just get to reading. So they're going to read um, right down below. So make sure that the work that you're um, your, your, the wording that you put down there is simple, easy, and clear to read. Don't write chapters upon chapters. Don't throw in so much stuff where it's not so clear. I've seen Kickstarter campaigns where there's so much going on in that visual thing down below. It's almost, uh, your eyes, your eyes get tired and you don't want to read that either. So just keep that in mind. You can check out my campaign. I just, I think I kept it pretty, pretty simple and just straight to the point. I had a couple of images and that was that, um, and it didn't get crowded with too much information. So that's something else that you want to uh, consider. Another thing that you want to consider is your image that you're going to use. Remember your image is the very first thing people are going to see, even on the Kickstarter page. So look and see. The best way to test this is go through Kickstarter, just go to discover projects and even in book publishing, whatever whatever it is you want to do and look at the icons and see what attracts you. When it starts to get too messy and busy and there's words being thrown in there all over the place, it just gets very hard to understand what it is. So make your your logo and everything that you do, just make it simple. I used red because red makes the eye pop. And that's why mine, I just did a red banner and mainly use that. And I'd like to think that that's what made people stop on it. And just again, your wording, make sure that you get straight to the point. What is this book within, you know, 10 words or less? Explain what it is you're trying to accomplish in it because that first section on your story is what people are trying to, are going to gauge whether they're going to click on it. So make that effective. All right. So those were, that was the little inset that I wanted to throw in there. Anything else after that? Yeah. You can ask questions just through, um, just the, the comments there. All right. Thanks. Bye. And please, I check the comments all the time for my art talk. So if you have comments or a topic that you would love me to cover that I haven't covered in my art talks, 
please um, please do so. That would be fantastic. Uh, I, again, I come up with these topics at random places, at random times. It pops in my head and I go, hmm. And uh, hopefully I haven't talked about them before. So stay tuned for that. Uh, this coming week on uh, Friday, I have a life drawing class. It's just five spots left. Um, in the, it's not a life drawing class. It's the uninstructed life drawing that I'm doing. So you can go to my website, silvertoons.com, into the events area. And you can always see upcoming events that I have going on. And if you have any country, any place in the world that you want me to do a workshop, just let me know. All you need to do is gather at least 30 friends, 30 people, and that's the magic number. That's all you kind of need. If it goes beyond, that's great. But with that, I'll I'll go, I'll come to you anywhere in the world that you want me to come to. I'm one of the places I really want to go is Israel. So if there's a lot of you in Israel that want to make this happen, hey, all it takes is initiative. Send me an email at silvertoons at yahoo.com. And let me know that, hey, we got a bunch of people that want to make this happen and we'll make it happen. Why not? And if you didn't pay for the books through Kickstarter, you don't want to pay for shipping, I'll bring the books with me. Even better, right? Thanks again for watching this. I hope this was well helpful for you guys and I shall see you next week. Take care. Hello, this is Steven and I just wanted to tell you about this cool thing that I'm doing right now through my website at silvertunes.com. It's a Skype mentorship. In a sense, what I want to do is just talk to you, meet you, tell me about things that are happening in your life. See if there's anything that I could do to help you. I can look over your artwork, do your portfolio, and just maybe try to push you in the right direction that you want to take your life and your journey, all right? So you can go to silvertunes.com, go to classes, click on mentorship, and you can learn all about it. We can try to arrange a time, set up a date. It doesn't matter where you live in the world. Um, and I just wanted to make it just very affordable just to open it up because I love doing this. I love meeting people from all over the planet. It's a really cool thing. And uh, with this technology, why not? So that's it. Thanks. Whoa. Hey. <laughs> go. go back. Go back. Go back. Great. Go back. Go back. Ha, ha, ha.